Fulham won, Aston Villa two. And I think we both predicted a Fulham win in this, didn't we? Ah, no, you did. I'd oh, I definitely did. I don't know why uh, I thought you I, did. I give Villa, I, I give Fulham a draw. I mean, it was okay. a combination of a couple of things. Obviously, Villa had a bad week on the injury front from their own perspective with uh, Kamara and then obviously Carlos lost as well. Um, on top of other injuries they've had. So a few got excited about Tyrone Mings being back in training, but Unai Emery confirmed not this season. It's going to be, he's, he's kind of in the recovery not stage. this season? He did his ACL, yeah. didn't he? Game I didn't week see one, that comment it? though. Okay. No, so I think people got hopes up because he'd rejoined aspects of training. Yeah. But yeah, in terms of return to training and return to playing time, often ACL two very, very different things. I think we've kind of seen that with Timber. People saying yeah. Timber back in training in December. Like, yeah, you've still got quite a way to go from that perspective. So Villa have obviously come into injury problems, plus factor in Fulham's home record. have been averaging 1.83 points per game in home games prior to this. Although, admittedly, with a lot of tough home games still to come, which obviously included Villa. And they've actually ended up winning this quite routinely. Other than they give uh, Rodrigo Muniz, who's on a good little patch at the moment, yeah. a really daft goal. Um, I've not actually a, seen his goal to be Well, fair. he nips in across the near post. There's a bit of a problem in uh, communication between Martinez and, and I think it was Longley. Um, and he's nipped in in front and scored. Uh, kind of out of nothing and Villa were in real control. So I think it sounds like Villa very much deserved the, the win at the weekend. Two goals for Watkins. Could yeah. have easily been more as well. It assisted an Alex Moreno effort that was ruled yeah. out from a set piece, which is so marginally I think a lot of people offside. have that duo as well, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Will have... Um, and I think Moreno probably is the one with the upside to go for from Villa Assets. We, we discussed this Thursday, right? Villa now probably number one target for people heading to 29. Yep. West Ham doesn't feel like such a target at the moment. If you're like me and already got three Villa in place, you're not doing anything about it. The upside one is Moreno, but obviously the threat of Luca Dean lingers. On Matty Cash, as warned, would probably happen way more defensive role, almost playing like right-sided centre-back in the build-up for yeah. a lot of the phases at the weekend. So in terms of you're looking for that output, not great. Plus, with Cash, Konsa drew back around about to that point, could eat him right in game week 29 in terms of his minutes and stuff. Pau Torres has obviously now got the big minutes <laughs> under play and is by miles the safest one to get. Yeah. And I, I think his return obviously quite transformative. So to go with the bad news for Villa this week, there's obviously the big bit of good news. That said, long lay having to play right-sided centre-back. I think he's been a problem at left-sided centre-back for Villa. You've seen a little glimpse here with Fulham's goal. It'd be a bigger problem at right-sided centre-back. Okay. And don't be surprised if going up against an opponent that's different, say like even Amon Yee this weekend, will pin he him. Unstuck. Okay. May well do, yeah. And I think those playing on the left-hand side in forthcoming games against Villa might have some joy. Sure. So if you're talking about sort of if Aaron Yee can either pin Longley or perhaps even drift off another way and isolate space for hudson Adoy, for example, to take on cash, Forrest might get some joy through those avenues on okay. Saturday. For someone like myself who's got Matty Cash and you spoke about concert potentially eating his minutes in 21, 29, would you look to move him to a Torres for that security of minutes? No, or, I no? think like whatever you've got, like you're sticking with at the moment, you're certainly not moving it now with Forrest this week. Yeah. I can't think taking a hit to shove that around. Okay. Um, certainly for someone like me who's got Torres, it's nothing to think about now. It's just a solid player that is, as long as he stays fit, will we'll play all the games up till 29. I don't think it was much debate that he was first choice anyway. Um, he's got to play. Yeah, at the moment, Torres. Whatever you've got, I wouldn't move on at this stage. Okay. So, you know, Cash might need reviewing in a couple of weeks, but there's no reason to think he wouldn't play against Forrest. Sure. And it's not that he can't return. He's just not going to be what you'd really want him yeah. there for at the moment. But that's real luxury talk there, isn't it? Um, the offensive ones, again, Watkins owners who have not got are probably looking at that with, I've got to get there, I yeah. think. Yeah. In terms of number one priority, if you're heading towards, if you're heading towards 29 and you want Villa, this really is the the week to go into them. Yeah, um, it's Forest at home, it's Tottenham at home 28, and remember, obviously for the offensive guys, that's still a brilliant fixture. Um, 27 they go to Everton, mm -hmm. which is challenging but not terrible. 29 away to West Ham. The closer it gets, the more you would just favour Villa. Yeah, I think. So it's definitely Villa in terms of, I think, number one targets for many this week, which leads to an interesting conversation about the midfielders. So I would define it a little bit like this with 
Bailey versus Louise, I think it's probably the biggest d- debate, but I wouldn't rule Jacob Ramsey out of people's thinking okay. either as a bit of a kind of a wild card. How one. would you rank them? Depends. <laughs> Depends. Let's, let's define it like this. It might even be defined by what sort of manager you are. Douglas Louise is definitely going to play. Yep. There's also the impact, of course, of Kamara's injury and perhaps playing a deeper role. Um, and I, th- I don't think we can judge on just one game at Fulham, which I've not seen a lot of. Something like Forest might give us a better indication in terms of ball dominance, maybe even at, at the weekend, that might even have more relevance to West Ham in 29, Everton 27, perhaps not against Tottenham in 28. But 26 might even give us more relevance. But I understand you probably want to buy this week. Louise still keeps the set pieces, the corners, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bailey, in terms of an expected per 90 output, will kill Douglas Luiz. Yeah. If, you're, if you're defining that as a comparison, all the metrics on that will have Bailey way ahead. But guess what? Expected Minutes. per 90. Well, Luiz will get the 90. Yeah. Bailey at the moment, for me, it's always been the case, I think, for the last couple of months, that he's playing so well, mm-hmm. he'll keep playing at this minute. Almost scored a screamer as well. But a couple of things can change that. One, injury. Now, he's been fine for the majority of these two months. The other thing that might change it is form. Plus, the concern that I've mentioned several times that Bailey and Cash together ain't a great fit. Okay. So, you've got one player, numbers-wise, way more explosive. That's the one I'd want to get. That's the one I'd want to punt. But do you absolutely need that body going forward? Not particularly. Doug's is still perfectly reasonable to get. So it might be defined by how much of a chance you want to take. Sure. Going forward. Then Ramsey? Me personally, at this stage, because it's such a short period, with sort of over a four-week period, preference for me would be Bailey. But then I've also got Bailey sitting there, so it's <laughs> easy for me to say. But I think over that longer period, looking back, I might have favoured Louise. I think it might lean back to Bailey this weekend got that X factor, isn't he? Like he, yeah. he's at the bar with a long ranger at the weekend. It's a slight preference for that. Okay. Fulham obviously played twenty nine as well. Probably not under target for this week. Obviously going to Manchester United, who've obviously hit form. Another goal for Muniz. But again, all the conversation we've had about these forwards: Holland, Solanke, Watkins, Tony. Where's it fitting in? Yeah. I don't think it is. Plus, I've said this several times, I think as soon as the blank comes, Breuer might come into the team. Breuer missed the squad at the weekend through illness, so it's not a serious problem. Raul Jimenez also, we think, will, will be back a roundabouts game with 29. So I think that's avoidable. Um, Alex Awobi supposedly impressed quite well when he, when he came on at the weekend. I think we'll probably eat into someone's minutes elsewhere, whether that's a William, a Harry Wilson, or even one of the central spots is difficult to define at this moment. So don't think you're going there. The majority of the back line are fit. So you can obviously have Bassi come in for Reem or Adarabio come in for Diop, Tete in for Castagne. Yeah, it's Robinson's the safest one, but again, I don't think you're looking at it this week. No. And I don't suppose anyone has got a goalkeeper problem enough to be looking at at Leno at this stage. So I think they're in a void. I also think they're safe enough that there's not... We, we're getting to that point in the season where we beach talk. Yeah, not far off it. Um, and that's not to say they won't turn up at Manchester United at the weekend. I, I think they probably will. I think they'll be quite motivated by the way they lost United earlier this season. Also, what happened to them in the FA Cup quarterfinal last year as well. Um, but they're, 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 they're not someone I'm worried about. They're not someone who's going to threaten for Europe. So they're the sort of one that begins to get listed under that beach idea, if you will. Yeah. Um, Dara Curran will be on Clash of Correspondence tomorrow with Gary Robinson to preview that game this weekend as well. Lovely stuff.